I'll call the meeting to order. Before we uh, jump in, let me read the evacuation procedures. In the event of an emergency evacuation, an alarm may sound. Everyone should exit the building by way of the nearest stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the nearest stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Do not use the elevator. Once you've reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Please be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. With that said, uh, we'll jump to the minutes. You all have received the minutes prior to the meeting. Any additions or corrections to the minutes? Motion approved. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Minutes are approved. Uh, is there anybody who wish to, wishes to speak? provide public input on items not on the agenda. Uh, on, the agenda. On, the on the agenda, I'm sorry. I read the bottom of the sheet first. <laughs> if there's none, we will continue on. Site plan, Roger, uh, nicest addition of storage tank facilities and access road in the Stock Creek Industrial Park off of Frank Bird Boulevard. That's right, it's a site plan for the, just the relocation of that facility. Uh, the property's uh, identified on tax map 9, parcel 27.12, and is zoned industrial. The site, uh, the facility will be um, an 89 feet by 20 feet concrete basin that is nine feet tall and will have an eight foot fence around the top of that. And the storage tanks will be placed down uh, in that basin. The required setbacks is 40 feet from the property line um, in the industrial zone. This site plan shows that the proposed structure will be six feet from the side property line that abuts the railroad right of way. Uh, the design review board for the development has already granted a, a conditional approval. That condition is based on the approval of this body and further down the way, it'll, it'll take a variance that they've already applied for, but won't be heard until next week by the BZA for that side setback. Um, they weren't required to because of the size of the project, but they have submitted a drainage and erosion plan and it has been reviewed by our stormwater department. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> We have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Get it. There's no discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion to approve the site plan subject to uh, the other approving bodies is granted. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Hearings, uh, Burger Property Concept Plan by Bob Heron, Heron off of Old Niles Ferry Road. Doug? Yeah, this is uh, just a, a concept plan, so there's no action required by the Planning Com Commission. <clears throat> As you'll see, there's simply five lots on the corner of Murphy and Old Niles Ferry Road. Uh, this is a major subdivision because it's five lots, so the future preliminary plat will require drainage planning for it. They may require a detention pond. It is quite sloped coming off of Old Niles Ferry Road. Um, they may actually have to lay the lots out in a little bit different position, and we may have some driveway restrictions in the future, but that would be at the preliminary plat stage. We wouldn't do that now. I mean, I have been out there to look at it, but we haven't done a full evaluation with the highway department. I just wanted you to look at it. Uh, the owner wanted to have a concept plan to see if the Planning Commission had any issues with it. And I, I don't see there being any. And we have already received the soil map, so the soil is good. All right. It is a concept plan. We do not have to approve or disprove, but the purpose of the concept plan is to get any uh, feedback if anybody has any uh, 
thoughts prior to uh, moving to the preliminary? Any, any input? If not, uh, Rod, uh, Doug, thank you for bringing the concept. I, I've got a question, <coughs> okay. actually. Where he said that there were no issues, but it sounded like to me that you just gave issues, so explain that to me, please. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're saying. <coughs> well, as far as the drainage, the et cetera. There's, no, there's it, nothing it, that jumps out that can't be resolved in the future. Okay, right? well, that's all I want to know. Yeah. Preliminary final plats, major subdivision, resubdivision of lot 93WR of the Homestead subdivision off of Long Raffle Road. Yeah, I've actually got two plats in here for you. Um, item D1, that's the proposed plat. And if you flip over, you'll see another D1. That's the previous plat. I think I have the year in there. I think it was 2006 or 8. Um, if you look at the second D1, what has occurred over time is lots 93W through 97 have all been combined into one lot. Um, the gentleman was going to put one house on it. That didn't work out. Um, he has put a driveway in there. A portion of it was previously, but on the, on the first D1, you'll see a shared driveway easement. All the lot. All of the lots have road frontage, but the, the easement's actually because it's a mountain and it's, it's for ease of access. Um, they're simply putting the lot lines back in to market them. They tried to sell it as one lot for a long time and it wouldn't, didn't do very well, so um, he's thinking this might help him liquidate the lots. Nothing has changed. The uh, Environmental Health Department um, has no comments at this time. I will double check with them before we sign the final plat, simply because there has been the issue of the driveway being completed. I don't believe there's been any other disturbance. I can't tell that there's been any being on those lots other than that driveway being gravel. And it's along lot lines pretty much anyway. So I don't see there, uh, I don't think there'll be any problems. I have the outstanding items to be completed on page three. There's just one uh, signature plats, including environmental health department certification, pending a final review and a $40 per lot platting fee. Any questions or comments? Uh, Bruce? Uh, motion to approve for staff recommendation. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Replat is approved, subject to uh, staff recommendations. Uh, preliminary final plats, minor subdivisions, Potter property off of Galen Road by Sharon Potter, three lots. Doug? Uh, yeah, um, we actually have, it looks like four lots here. Um, they've actually done a plat on the entire remainder, so I'm not counting that as a lot. It's simply a remainder over five acres. It's actually 16.9 acres. Um, lots one, two, and three all have county road frontage. And I was corrected by the surveyor. He said there's actually over eight acres there, but when I added them up, I only came up with 7.1. I guess there is eight. There's over eight acres. Um, there's really no issues here other than lot two has a really steep bank. It would be very difficult to put a driveway up it so that the easement is simply for lot two to have access across the existing driveway of lot three. Um, we're just gonna put a note on the plat at this time for a common driveway. Those lots are substantial in size. Four, uh, lot one is four acres, lot two is two acres, and three is two acres. Um, not knowing exactly how the soil type is, they can possibly be redivided and they could extend that easement in the future. So that's an option for the owner. Um, the outstanding items to be completed are on page four. Number one, uh, signature plats, including environmental health department certification, pending final review, and a $20 per lot platting fee. Any comments or questions? Bruce? Uh, well, since I've got my light on, I don't see a location tied to an intersection. I think it should be necessary in there somewhere. We'll make sure it gets on there.
Any other questions or comments? Yeah, it's a house. It's actually pretty close to the county road. It's already existing, and there's really another no place for the easement. You know, I don't know that it does. And I mean, they could scoot it over, but then you're you're skewing the center line of the easement as well with the drive. So, whatever your preference is. We'll make sure there's a 10 foot side easement on it. I said that. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. But it is plenty of room there. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve with completion of outstanding items. This included the outstanding items to ensure the setback of the uh, shared easement and a tie. Uh, how did you say that, Bruce? To a, a tie to an intersection on the plat. Property assessor has complained to me several times about maps that don't have ties and they have trouble <coughs> placing them <coughs> at times. Do I have a second? Second. If there's no further comments, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, Resubdivision of lot 15 of Watershaw subdivision by Mark and Koki Best, two lots with county road frontage. Variance request to number of lots off of a single entrance. Doug? Yeah, there's uh, several plats I've attached, or at least attachments under miscellaneous one. And we'll go through all of them. Just give me a second. We'll, we're going to go through the history here, too. Um, I'd like you to know uh, Mark Best is here as well to speak. He's the current owner of the property. If you have any questions that I can't address, I'm sure Mark will be more than glad to speak to the Planning Commission. Um, I don't know if you've had time to read this. Actually, let's look at the miscellaneous one. This is a simple. Uh, division of the property. They simply want to divide the pro property in half, each being about two and a quarter acre. So there's actually less than five acres to start with. And they want to, they're asking for the variance just to simply split the property in two. There's two residences or two potential residences on the property. And they want to do it for family reasons. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to the next plat miscellaneous one. I didn't put, I thought there was page numbers, but there's not. It's simply the second page. This is Watershaw subdivision. It was approved in 1978 as a 28 lot subdivision with Watershaw Drive being the main road off of Disco Loop. Watershaw was the main entrance road and then it went to Island, Island View Drive, which is the road that makes the T with the two cul-de-sacs at the end. <clears throat> at that time, from what I could tell from my research, um, before they even got final plat approval, several people had come in wanting to buy these lots and were already asking the Planning Commission if they could redivide them. Um, that became a concern of the Planning Commission and they basically approved the plat with the condition and the note is actually on there, you can't read it, but any future subdivision would have to go back to the Planning Commission which if it was over two lots at the time, it would have had to go back anyway. But that was one of the conditions of approval. The next month, one of the tracks came in for redivision and the planning commission turned it down. Based, but they didn't say anything other than they were concerned about population density. Um, and they basically gave instruction that if the developer wanted to redivide, they just bring a whole new plat in and that never occurred. Um, over the next several years, uh, many of the lots on the northern section of Island View Drive, that's the, the T to the left, uh, were redivided, as well as a few lots on the southern section of Island View Drive. And if you look at the next drawing, it's actually at a different position on the page. 
and it is hard to see, I apologize. It'll kind of give you a total of where we're at now. Um, anyway, this went on from 78 until about 1996. There were several resubdivisions of the lot, several of the lots, and most of the lots were on Island View because they had lake frontage. Um, in 1996, the number of lots off of a single entrance was brought to the Planning Commission for the request to divide a track that would have resulted in more than 40 lots off of a single entrance. In February, this plat was approved, what did I say, in September of 1978. In February of 1978, the Planning Commission adopted the subdivision regulations. And that was for the first time, that was, from what I could tell, the first time the subdivision regulations had a limit on the number of lots off of the single entrance, which was 40 lots off of one entrance. <clears throat> it didn't become an issue until 1996. Um, one of the owners wanted to divide one of the lots that would have gone over 40. He, what he did is he, <coughs> he combined one lot with the property he had and redivided two lots into three, so the number remained the same. Um, but that was brought before the Planning Commission. I don't know what happened in the interim. If you look at the third drawing I've given you, there are actually 42 lots currently off of the single entrance. And what I'm calling the single entrance is Watershaw Drive. And I've also labeled four other properties that have access off of Watershaw Drive, but it's not their exclusive access. So there's 42 exclusively off Watershaw Drive and four additional lots that have access to Watershaw Drive. Um, I would like to mention that, um, because I think it is important, Watershaw Drive is a 26-foot wide paved road between the curbs, and Island View Drive is a 26-foot wide road between the curbs. And Disco Loop Road, which serves the entire subdivision, is 20 foot wide, which is standard for a county road. I mean, to have numbers that are below what we require for subdivision. Um, I, I will answer any questions. I think Mr. Best may want to speak to you. Um, the outstanding items to be completed are, number one, the consideration of the variance request by the Planning Commission, and number two, signature plus, including Environmental Health Department certification, <coughs> pending final review and a $20 per lot platting fee. I'd like to add one more condition. I think we need to show the flood plain on the, on the plat. Go back one. Flood plain, flood plain. No flood plain there. Yeah, he's got it right there. Yeah, there's a flood plain up through here too. My name is Mark Best, and uh, just kind of forgive me, I've been fighting allergies for, for two weeks, so if you can't understand me, just ask me to repeat something. But I just kind of want to go over how we got to this, this point, uh, the steps through this. My son, he, he found the lot. He'd been looking for lake lots for probably five years. Come to us, uh, my wife and I, and said he'd found one. We went and looked at it, checked the restrictions on the subdivision, and we, we were able to build a smaller home. You know, some of these you have to build a huge home. This one, you didn't have to build a huge home. And you could subdivide if, if it was left an acre, over an acre was left, you could, you could divide that point. And we didn't have any plans to develop. We're not developers. I mean, this was gonna be our home. We sold our home. We've been in for 30 years and purchased the lot. And at that time, and in, together with our son, and uh, at, at the closing, agent or property owner never did. The, you know, we told them we intended to split the lot with our son. Nothing was ever mentioned about not being able to, to split the lot up at that time. Uh, we started building our home in April, and we finished up pretty much this week. We're supposed to have our final inspection uh, Monday. The lot did, I, I forgot to say, it did have a, a two-story barn on it. And our son, that was his plan. He was going to uh, build uh, a residence in that home in the second floor of that. 
Uh, we went, had a survey done two or three weeks ago, had the soil test for, for this meeting, and took it to planning. And we, at that time, we were showing four lots. Uh, we were able to get, have, it's a five, almost a five acre lot. Took it to them, uh, soil looked good. Uh, they said the plan looked, looked good at that time. Got a call back that afternoon and said, whoops, you know, we've got a, may have a problem with that about subdividing it. So that's, that's kind of where we're at that point. One of the restrictions from the uh, Watershire subdivision is that there can only be one residence on the lot. So there we're, we're stuck with that. We're, uh, we're in a bad situation from that. I guess uh, Doug mentioned you know Watershaw Drive. I, uh, I guess I'll. The first part was from personal. Th this other one make some observations and, and some information on this. Uh, I am a, a professional engineer. I worked with TDOT. Uh, I was a traffic uh, regional traffic engineer for 10 years, and then the last 10 years I've been managing uh, the traffic engineer. So, so we do a lot of traffic studies. I'm familiar with you know safety. Uh, and uh, operational of, of roadways. And I don't know if y'all, anybody familiar with the subdivision? Have you been, I mean, it's deserted. I mean, people, they drive their golf carts along the, the road and, and everybody walks there. So, you know, the operational part of it, uh, there's no safety issues, uh, operation works. I, do y'all have a drawing? I've got a, a drawing of the, the lots, the way they're bro broken up, I mean, the way you understand it goes out from Disco and then it tees out. Uh, Watershaw goes left and uh, Island View goes to the right. And we're, if you keep going, you drive right into our lot. We're, we're right on, so there's five entrances or five lots before you get to our subdivision. So uh, uh, then the uh, lot split. I'm, I'm not sure where the 40. That's what So, okay, that's, I was going to pass that around, but you all have that. Uh, I guess that's, that's kind of, uh, not sure I guess where the 40, you know, lots come from, but as far as, you know, as Doug mentioned, it, it is a, uh, 26 foot roadway. I'm, I'm assuming emergency, you know, being able to get in is, is part of that and access in and out. You know, accessing in and out is, is easy. The 26 foot road is almost like a three lane on some of, some of our roads. You know, we have eight, nine foot lanes. So it's almost to be uh, looked at as, as a three lane road. You know, plenty of room for emergency vehicle to get through if there's an incident or a wreck or something. Can I explain the regulation a little bit from 1978? I don't know if that might help things. You can have 40 lots off of a single entrance. Road width in the regulations you can have up to 20, you, you know, it would be there, if you had 40 lots, it would be either 24 or 26 foot wide. In 1978 through 2006, the Planning Commission regulate, the subdivision regulations that the Planning Commission approved allowed for 40 lots off of a single entrance. If you added in our internal loop, which is just one loop, you could gain 20 lots. And you could do that twice. So you could have 40 lots plus a loop is 20 is 60 plus a loop is 80. That was the maximum. When we sat down in 2002, three through about the beginning of 2006, before we changed the regulations, we looked at that again. What we had included, one of the things that I had spoke to the Planning Commission and Mr. Dunlap and a lot of people, engineers, is a lot of the property that we were dividing in the, from 2005 on was property that was further away from county roads. The better, more accessible county road property has been divided over the years. So the property that's harder to get to is usually in the back. So there was some concession made to allow for more lots off of those single entrances. We created two different scenarios. We still allow only 40, 40 lots in the regulations off of a single entrance, but we now allow four loops for a total of 120 lots off that same entrance. 
And then we also gave developers an option to build what we call as a boulevard, where the boulevard would be in one easement, but you'd have two 20-foot roads with two lanes each going in and out of the subdivision. So that's where the 40 lots comes from. I don't know where it came from in 1978 originally when we, you know, when they went with it in 2006, we just continued on with what was there before. And there's different, you know, thought behind why that occurs in the first place. Most of it is safety related from what I understand. Does anybody have a question, for, any question for Mr. Doug, Best? Doug, do you know why lot 23 was turned down? I'm just curious. No, it I have says no. 20, lot 23 was turned down. Um. What, what I read in the minutes was that, um, you know, they, when they approved the plat in September of 1978, they actually made a statement at the time that, keep in mind, I didn't read any statement where they were concerned with the number of lots off the entrance. What the, what the concern was and what they said was they were concerned with population density in the area, being that it was a more rem remote part of the county in 1978. And um, they basically said that they wanted to note on the plat that any future divisions would have to go before the planning commission. And they, that note is on that first plat in 1978. So when the plat came in, lot 23, when it came in, they simply turned it down and told the people that were developing it, I don't even think they were the developers, they were someone that bought the lot. They told that person, go back and tell the developer to give us another plat showing how many lots you really want here. And that, that, that plat never came back. And then several years went by and people start on the left side of the subdivision, yeah. start dividing theirs left and right. And then some people on the right said, well, we're gonna do it. And then in 1996, all of a sudden there's, they're up to 40. And then that's when it came back to the planning commission. Okay. Uh, Let me recognize David for a moment. He's got a question for Mr. Best. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Best, um, just for clarification, lot 15B is your residence. It's being completed as of now, correct? Y yes, it is. And the two-story, that's the existing barn. It's been there for years. We, yes. And that's what your son plans on? Yes. Has there been any improvements to that building as of now? The, the barn? I mean, is it, is it under construction, under remodeling now, or has there no. not been any improvements as of now? All right, thank you very much. Okay. Commissioner French? Uh, I guess one last question. Uh, Watershaw Drive and Island, View, and Island View Drive are county roads. Yes, sir. So, so the county is responsible for maintenance of that. What about Disco Loop Road? Who is that? It's county. That's also county? Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't say that. I didn't see. Okay. Yeah, it does. The next sentence. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner uh, McClellan. I don't have any problem with the plat, but on the original plat, it's got a 100 foot water hazard boundary. I don't know that you can just take that away automatically. I'm sorry, Bruce. The original plat has a 100 foot water boundary, water hazard boundary map line shown from the water's edge. I don't think you can just take that away. Mr. Chairman, yeah, we'll make sure the plat's in order. Mark is right. His plat came in with four lots, and I was hurried when I asked the surveyor to send me something. I said, just get me a PDF and show two lots. If, if you approve the variance, we'll make sure the two lots work for what Mark wants and what the health department can approve. That line might not be straight down the middle. It might be zigzagged. It might even be off an easement. The idea is to get two lots. And we'll make sure all the, all the notes from the previous plat get on this plat. We'll make sure they're all on there. Another question about the previous plat. It looks like it shows a TVA flowage easement going up into the property, which he does, and then maybe that's something he hadn't got to either. Then. See that? Well, the TVA flowage easement is shown. Is it, not? Well, it shows an 820 boundary, but the original map shows it going up into the lot. You see that shaded area? Well, the, the, I think the water hazard area was just something that they established around the lake at the time in lieu of a, a defined. I'm, I'm I understand what you're saying. You're no, talking about two different things here. Yeah. I mean, you got to live with the old TVA maps, is what I'm saying. I got you. Are you talking about that finger? That finger that looks like it might have been a TVA flowage easement going up there, just like between 17 and 18, where it cr actually crossed the road and stuff. Uh, that's well, actually a flood. Yeah, we'll check that, though, because the floodplain maps have changed, so it needs to be on the current floodplain map, not just because it's on this plat. No, that's not floodplain. That's flowage easement. We'll make sure that's a, We'll make sure whatever needs to be on there is on there. Uh, 
two I different things. Two different things. Okay, now we have another question. Uh, do we have any other questions? No. Yeah, I, do. I do for Mr. Best. Okay, we got a question for Mr. Best. Sorry. Um, okay. that, that finger that we're talking about that's shaded there, is, is there been any fill or has that been excavated and filled in in any way or does that still remain? I don't think he would know. I don't think we could tell either. Really? I mean, if, if Gary gets out there and has a problem with it, he, Gary hadn't indicated any problem with the soils for the division. Um, and he'll definitely work around that area. So I'm sure. with the final plat or preliminary plat that comes back to us, Gary, that very well, that finger could very well be gone or, or made smaller, correct? Well, first off, the plat won't come back to you if you approve it. Okay. It'll be right. staff approved and we'll make sure, like we always do, that all the proper notes are on there. I'll go back to the surveyor since you mentioned it, make sure that flow adjustment and all the technical information for the uh, flood limits are on the plat. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, plat with variance. Hey, Any with further variance, discussion? Okay, just make sure that with yeah, with variance. Uh, Commissioner McClellan, you made the motion and, and Geneva second. Okay. If there's no further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Best. Make sure you work with Doug, get everything straightened on the plat. You can do Lot one. 1R, Tarwater and Ore Subdivision off of Highway 411 South and Old Niles Ferry Road. John, you handling this one? I guess so, because Doug just turned his light off. <laughs> <laughs> This comes as a, as a replat. This is one of the uh, detention areas that we had a problem with uh, in the past. And, and by the way, we will have a public hearing next month to change our regulations about the ownership and maintenance of these types of detention areas. Uh, this will actually resolve the past problem with that detention area. In the past, it was a standalone detention area uh, of unknown ownership. And uh, it went to tax uh, sale and somebody bought it and Mr. Tarwater repurchased it and wants to combine it with his uh, existing lot that fronts on US Highway 411 South. Uh, this could have been a fairly simple uh, deal, uh, but the, the detention area has been reconfigured and we got the engineering on that to show that it is justified to be reconfigured uh, to accommodate a driveway uh, going from Old Miles Ferry in, on to Lot 1R. Uh, now that, uh, by the way, the 12-foot uh, ingress and egress easement really needs to come off because uh, you can't grant an easement to yourself. This is actually a part and parcel of the property. I think that niche needs to be re-designated re, uh, as a driveway. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons I brought it back to you was is it will resolve one of the issues uh, that we had outstanding of one of the standalone lots. And second, this will provide some access. It's going to be very limited, 12 foot ingress, egress easement. It doesn't provide you much access, but it does provide some access from basically a residential road, Old Miles Ferry Road, to a commercial lot. The main portion of lot 1R is zoned uh, commercial. And uh, so I just wanted to bring that before you. I don't think this is going to constitute a main entrance. 12 foot wide driveway doesn't constitute a main entrance to a to a commercial lot. There are other lots uh, along Old Miles Ferry that have a similar situation. In fact, just down, I think that was it the John Young property has a similar situation going from the back on the Old Niles Ferry, a gravel drive to the front, which is a commercial lot. So it's not uncommon down through, down through there. I think there's a few others that also are of that character. I wanted to bring this to you uh, for your approval because it wasn't just a standard type of a combination. It had some quirks to it, and I would like for your review of it and your approval. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tarwater, you understand that uh, planning has recommended the, a note, or there be a note on the plat that commercial business truck traffic shall not use the entrance off of Old Niles Ferry? Did 
John, you want to speak to that? Well, basically, we've got a subdivision that's residential back there, uh, having heavy truck traffic go past that residential. 12-foot wide drive is not going to really accommodate much uh, truck traffic. I understood from your discussion with me that this is for you to access from your property across the street easily onto your property on 411. That purpose can be accommodated with this, uh, but heavy truck traffic probably would not be a, uh, appropriate uh, next to a, a residential subdivision. Yeah, come, will you come up to the microphone? The property uh, that abuts the end of my property uh, has a commercial access that comes out the back that big trucks and stuff come in that joins the first house that I built. And I built the four houses down through there at the time. That driveway is quite a, quite a ways away from those residential lots. It's on the other side of that middle building, if I remember correctly. It's probably, uh, probably 60 foot or 80 from the property line. But yes, it is, it is a little farther away from the yeah. residential it goes, it, goes, it goes to the other side of that middle building. Correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I just, I'm concerned about putting uh, heavy commercial traffic right next to a residential lot that we have approved. This is not zoned commercial. That detention area is not zoned commercial. And that's the reason for the, for the note. My understanding with my uh, discussion with you, the main purpose of the driveway is just to allow you personally to get from your lot Correct. to the front easier. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that's what I'm shooting for. Yeah. But I didn't understand why he could run big trucks out of his driveway on the back, and I wouldn't be able to mine. That's the only, that's the only reason I was asking. I think it was because it was a little bit, it developed a little bit differently <coughs> than this property. We don't know what's going to be on your property in front. Uh, if it generates a lot of traffic it would not be a good policy for this planning commission to encourage heavy traffic, heavy commercial traffic along Old Niles Ferry Road. I mean, that's mainly a residential uh, access road for, for properties along it. Uh, noting the exceptions and noting the character of the exception of property next to you, that driveway is quite a ways away from any of the, of the residential properties. This one that you're proposing is right next to one that's built for residents. Right, it's probably half as half as uh, the distance. Mine's probably half as much as the other one is. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, it's right next to it. I mean, it's right next to lot five. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. It, it, but it's from the house to the driveway. Mm -hmm. It's probably half half the distance between uh, Howard's house and the other driveway. But that's Mr. Tarwater's correct. Mm -hmm. The house on lot five is is moved over a little yes. bit to the left. That's his only point. Mm -hmm. It's about 30 feet from the driveway instead of 60. Yeah. Or more, that's a big lot. That's the biggest lot of those four right there. That was a... How, wide, how wide is the road on, this, on the other side of the metal building if it's being used for commercial uh, traffic? How wide is it? Is it less? Mm -hmm. Is it 12 it's, feet or is it more than 12 feet? Uh, it's probably about the same. About the same, yeah. Bruce, I uh, would like the surveyor to put a tie on this one to some intersection. And personally, I think the detention area ought to be dimensions so that you know the size of it, so they don't increase it or decrease it. Don't you typically dimension the don't size didn't, on the detention areas? Didn't have it on the previous plat, I don't think. We don't have a previous plat. It know. just had a dotted line showing the top of the pod. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a very shallow detention area. It's not a de real defined, you know, ponding type situation. But it was engineered, right? Yes, it's engineered. Probably. Yes. I still think it ought to be dimensioned. Sorry. 
All right, any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Tarwater. Thank you. All right, Bruce, you wanted a tie uh, to an intersection and dimensions on the detention area? Yes. You want to put that in your motion? I know. <laughs> I got a quick question, John. <clears throat> is he doing away with the lot line so this yeah. becomes one big lot? When he does that, yeah. is this detention area not commercial at that point? No. The zoning is purely uh, from uh, action of the county commission, and it ends at the back, the main back portion of lot one. So L2 would be the, actually the division line between the commercial RAC zone and the, the detention pond would still be residential. Even though there's not a lot line there anymore. Wouldn't matter. It, when the, when the, you specify, zone. when we rezone under RAC, we specify a distance. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually, in this case, we specified a property, uh, and it was just that property as it was configured before. So you, you would have to actually come back in and request for a rezoning to add the detention area to that RAC. Just because we replat doesn't change the a, a action by the legislative body. So he's going to have a property with two different zonings on the same property. Yes, and that's not uncommon. Okay. Particularly in RAC, because if you go down RAC, we've zoned deeper lots, but limited it to, the, to a certain depth. Commissioner French. Should we put a condition on this particular 12-foot egress and ingress that it should not be used as a commercial entry? That I was mean, one of the recommendations, a note on the plat that commercial business truck traffic shall not use the entrance off of Old Niles Ferry Road. Okay. I guess you would need to put that on to the, uh, well, that's, that's what the recommendation is of staff. If you look at page eight, Uh, have you checked the tree situation? Yeah, needs to cut them down. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Was Mr. the retention Walker? pond put here for those lots, that those yeah. residential lots? Is that the purpose of it? Can I yes. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I've got a plaque here from 2004. The recorded plat from 2004 shows the detention pond, and it's tied to that. To those lots, to those four was lots. not tied to our, to the, to the commercial lot at all. Actually, the uh, the engineer had uh, calculated it to include the commercial lot. Okay. He recalculated it, knowing that there's actually it comes up and rises and come back comes back down to the uh, the residential portion. That when the uh, commercial lot comes through for a site plan, it is such, of such size that it's going to require a detention area anyway. So any detention area for the commercial development will be taken care of in the site plan process. So that part. Yeah. Lot. That's correct. Mm -hmm. it'll, be a, it'll be a site plan. It'll be a site plan uh, detention. It won't be a plat detention. Commissioner French. Got one more question. How is the drainage off of these <coughs> residential lots going to get to that detention pond? It goes along the road and then cuts across, uh, I think cuts across lot five uh, for a portion and goes into the detention area. Uh, so, that driveway is actually going to have to be put in with care to make sure that there's a that, cross drain. That's, that's okay. That was my question. Is that correct? Is there yeah. going to be a tiling of the driveway? Is there going to be uh, the lots all drain down to the county road. The engineer, they put four driveways in with four tiles. It looks like a regular county ditch. The engineer designed it that they would run down the to the county ditch, go down to the detention pond, turn, go into the pond, away from the county road. He's going to turn, turn on its own and go into the pond. I'm just, he's just going to turn on its own and go into the pond. I mean, is there going to be a traffic cop down there directing it how to go? Or There's, I'm just curious. Well, water water I, seeks its own level. Is there going to be another level. tile there? Or? <laughs> Those, those, is it going to just uh, 
Yeah, there'll be a problem. Okay, I just carry it. But Mr. Tarwater, is this going to be a gravel or asphalt or concrete driveway? But you're going to have a tile yes. underneath your driveway, whatever it is. All right, any further questions? Do I have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, we need to add Bruce's comment yeah. about yeah. All right. I thought that so was So it's a motion it to approve with staff recommendations in addition to uh, Bruce's uh, request for a tie to intersection and uh, Defe detention pond. Uh, dimensions on detention. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, long range planning, staff. Roger, you want to? Mm -hmm. This is. Just a report on the rezoning off of Leequire Road. The County Commission has sent that back to the Planning Commission. It'll be before you next month. Didn't have time to get it on this agenda. Okay, it wasn't sent back. It wasn't rejected then. It was rezoning. Oh, it was rezoning on Leequire Road. From R2 to R1. So they've, they've, they've sent it back for further discussion. bring it back to you guys and you can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Commissioner McClellan. Uh, so I just want to ask John something I meant to ask him earlier when I'm getting ready for it. Go ahead. The, the planning thing we did over at the Alcoa about the town, town center kind mm -hmm. of thing, is that something that could possibly come for fruition in the County at some time, at off of like 321 South. Well, the, the county is not a town that needs a center. We we have some uh, uh, wording in our plans about clustering, and if you want to identify a more uh, forcefully clustering concept, then the town center type of uh, discussion uh, would have some bearing. But it's not a town. It's a what, whatever it's a they place. Call, I don't remember what what they didn't call them town centers. They call them something else. Well, it's it. They call it placemaking. Uh, which is, you, you, what you want to do is define a character of a place that people can look at and say that's a place, and it's not just kind of a slough. And well, I'm thinking the old Ramsey Farm would be a great place to just develop something like that out there on 321 South. But. Which one's the Ramsey Farm? Uh, is that near Henry Lane? Just the, the lift. On 321. Yeah. Well, that, that kind of that's that's probably going to be more like a, a neighborhood type of development. We have provisions in our regulations already uh, to allow mixed use development but nobody has taken those provisions and run with them because it's just something that uh, it's not within the mindset of developers thinking right now. <laughs> we could accommodate it right now. Yeah. Okay, uh, one, I have one other thing and that's to remind you about training opportunities. Uh, next Tuesday, uh, we have a uh, TDOT uh, presentation on their uh, their long range plan and uh, I would encourage you to go to that if you can. I'd be a good introduction to what some of the constraints are to, uh, to funding new roads and road improvements uh, throughout the state and one of the reasons why we've had some delays and so forth uh, in, in Blunt County. The second one is Thursday, October 29th. Uh, I'm going to keep reminding you of that because that no matter how many hours you've got, you've got to have private property rights 
and uh, as part of your education each year, and that's an opportunity to get that. That's all I have. How, how, how many hours are you? No, it's the it's the fifth Tuesday. Fifth Tuesday. Oh, Thursday. I'm first. It's fifth Thursday. Well, I think the one on, on October 29th will run about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, the one on September the 29th is actually going to be one hour. Uh, the one on the 29th is here. On, on September 29th is here at the training room. And the one on uh, Thursday, October 29th is in uh, Farragut, Farragut. Farragut Town Hall. Yeah, I think we only stayed an hour and a half they gave us two. Okay. <laughs> Counting transfer. Tuesday 6. Oh. Tuesday 6, Thursday 7, Friday 8. Yeah. All right, we have one more item. Uh, public input on items not on the agenda. Anyone in the audience wants to speak to items not on the agenda? Would you like to speak? We are adjourned. <laughs>